The trials where I stand, you're still working every circumstance according to your plan. So in death or life, I give my yes, cause worthy is the Lamb. You are worthy of my worship and the lifting of my hands. You are with me in the triumph and the trial. Absolutely amazing. What a week we have in store. But I also want us to give a big hand clap to our church family joining us online. Come on, will you give them a big clap and welcome them? Wherever you're joining us from, you are welcome. I tell you, this is going to be a special week. Amen. And I want you to come with expectation. I want you to come when you've set your heart on God. And here's a beautiful thing about God is that He is always present. The expectation is actually on us to lean into God. And I want you to set your heart before God and say, you know what, Lord? I am here to meet with you. I'm here to have an encounter with you. I'm not coming out of duty. Yes, an invitation was made. But Lord, I am here to hear from you. The beautiful thing the Bible promises us is this. When we draw close to him, he will draw near to us. These evenings are set aside for you to come and have a moment with your God. They're designed for you to come and spend time with Jesus. Look upon the cross, reflect, take time to think upon how our wonderful Savior gave Himself for us. And we're going to be diving deep into that over the next couple of days. And my prayer is that resurrection power will invade this place and the people online and that will experience the presence of God. That is my prayer. And so I want us to start by lifting up our hands. We're going to pray a prayer of faith and we're going to ask God to show up like He always does. Lord, we're starting out this week by fixing our eyes on You, by setting our hearts on You. Lord, we are here to meet with You. We pray that this evening will be like nothing that we have seen or had or experienced before. I pray that your presence 
will be so powerful that corporately we will have an encounter with you but individually we will also hear from you here in person and online I pray that the power of your presence during worship during prayer during the word will be like nothing we have experienced before we are hungry for you we call them revival weeks because we want you to revive us we want you to set our hearts on fire once again so we lift up our hands today and we ask, Lord, have your way. You who is our Savior, you who has called us out of the grave of darkness and called us into your marvelous light, may your presence show up and may our lives never be the same again. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Come and say amen if you believe it. Are you ready to wash him? All right. Clap your hands like this. All right. Okay. Yeah. We sing, I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? my tomb till I met you yeah. I was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried to hide it was my tomb till I met you come on testify here we go
And that's our rock. Come on, take a moment, lift up your hands, just declare his praises. Tell him, Lord, this is who you are to me. My redeemer. You are my savior. You are my firm foundation. You are my portion. You are my first love. You are my heart's desire. You are my life. You are my very breath. Come and lift up your voice in this place. Just tell him, Lord, you are everything. You are what I live for. You are my purpose. Yes, you are my very existence. You are everything. You are my beginning. You are the end. You are the purpose of my life. You are the destiny of my life. You are the ultimate for me. 
You are my 100%. You are everything, God. Oh God, we worship you. We love your name. And the power that is in your name. We love to worship your name. So powerful. So holy. Sing together. There's a name that levels mountains. Comes that how it's through the sea. I've seen it smile and ravel battles right in front of me. There's a thing. Let's declare it again. There's a faith that stands defiant sends Goliath to his knees I've seen us praise and ravel shackles right off my feet come on with every hand raised to King Jesus that's the power of your name just a mission makes a way Giants fall and strongholds break and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. It's the Singing, there's hope. There's a hope that calls our courage. In the finest time of the kind of daring expectation that every prayer I make is on an empty grave. That's the just a mission makes a way Giants fall and strongholds break There is healing That's the power that I claim It's the same that rolled the grave There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus
Your name is healing. Your name is life. There's no power like the man's name of Jesus. That's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Shine is born and strongholds break. There is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go. Oh God, it's more than a song. It's more than a song. That's what we believe. No power like your name. There is no power like your name. A power that is in your blood. That power that is in your blood. Your blood is never.
declare it was more. It was more than enough. It was more than enough. Oh, the power of your love that set me free. It was more than enough. It was more than enough. It is finished. Death defeated. minutes it's now you and the Lord pour out your heart to him and begin to thank him for that cross come on you know where he found you where the blood of Jesus rescued you from go ahead before your master and pour out thanksgiving and praise for that precious blood that has never lost its value that has never lost its power
was our cross that he took thank him for his love and mercy displayed through his death on the cross Jesus we thank you today lost your lives but the blood of Jesus rescued you alcohol had a grip of you drugs had a grip of you depression had a grip of you but the blood of Jesus called you out of darkness and redeemed you into his marvelous life you ought to lift up your hands and just thank him It was our sin that nailed you to that cross. We were the rebels. We were the rebels. We are the ones who sinned against God. But you had already made a commitment and nothing was going to slow you down. by the power of almighty God you entered into a more perfect tabernacle that wasn't made with human hands and you shed innocent pure spotless blood once for all Now we are here on the other end of your obedience to the Father. We are alive in the aftermath of your obedience. And we who deserved death have been given life. We have been given mercy. We have been given grace. Who are we? Who are we? That you were so mindful of us. And that we can be called children of God. We thank you for the blood. 
that blood that speaks of better things. A new covenant written in the blood of Jesus. An eternal covenant that has snatched us from the jaws of death and has dealt Satan and every power of darkness a death blow. And now we are redeemed. And so let the redeemed of the Lord give him praise in the house today. Come and let the redeemed of the Lord if you're thankful for the blood, I want you to just let out a shout of praise. It is a shout of adoration. It is a shout of acclamation to the King. We ascribe greatness to your name. We call you Savior. We call you Redeemer. We call you our, our Master. We call you our King. We praise you. Come on church one more time. Will you lift up a praise? Will you lift up a shout in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are continuing in moments of prayer. I want to take this moment and invite Pastor Edu is going to come as we continue to reflect upon the Son of God who hung on that cross for us. Please be seated. The blood was more than enough. Amen. Wow, what a song. Bound by the shackles of sin. And then Jesus came and just all by himself, with that invitation from us, he came and just did it. Come on, give him praise this evening, everybody. Amen. Easter is just a few days away, and this is day number one of our revival week. Amen. And revival is all about bringing things back to life. Back to life. And I'm looking forward to God doing a work in you, a new work in you. How many of you are expecting that God is going to do a work in your lives today? Uh, that is what I want in this place, because faith is what really brings to life what God has in store. As we were preparing for this um, revival week, and of course, it's always about the cross. And you know, it's never, and it's not about the cross per se. The cross in itself has no power. What brings power to the cross is the person who hung on the cross. Right. Amen. There were three people who hung on the cross on Calvary that day, but the cross I'm referring to is a cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Bible is talking about the cross, it means the cross of Christ, not any other cross, not the cross that you are wearing. Some of you, some of you, it's a necklace, it's a earrings, but the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, as we were preparing for this revival week, and we sensed in our hearts that we need to just really focus and zoom into the cross of Christ. And... One of the scriptures that came to life as I was thinking about today was Galatians chapter 5, verse 11. Galatians is written by Paul to the people that he preached the gospel to that had believed the gospel, but later some Jewish religious people came, the Judaizers, and they said, you need to add some works to Jesus in order for you to be really saved. In other words, the cross was not enough. You need to do something that is Jewish for you to be saved. And then Paul comes back and he said, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? In other words, something has changed. By the time you move away from something that was freely given to you by grace and you want to add some works, something has really gone wrong. 
And then Paul, this preacher of the cross of Christ, lived a life of persecution. And in verse 11, he says this. Where is verse 11? It's right there. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, in other words, the works of the law, why am I still being persecuted? In other words, Paul is saying, the reason I'm being persecuted is because I'm preaching something different from circumcision. And the people who were persecuting him were religious leaders. In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. The cross is offensive to anything you want to add to what Jesus has already accomplished for you on the cross. The cross offended the Jewish believers because they thought, no, 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 no. It cannot be that simple. No, for all our lives, our ancestors, they try to obey the law. Now you are saying that salvation simply comes by grace alone. Through faith alone in Christ alone. No, 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 no. You got to add something to it. It offended them that salvation was free. Now let me jump to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Paul says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's foolishness to the sinner. It does not make sense. Because how can a man dying on the cross lead you to something that you've always wanted and you get it free of charge? It doesn't make sense. It is foolishness. To those who believe that you have to do something in order to receive something from God in terms of salvation. It's foolishness. But to us, to us who have understood that the cross is enough, we can never add nothing to it, that whatever Jesus did on the cross was sufficient and the Father was fully satisfied in the sacrifice of the Son and we come freely, we offer nothing to God for us who are being saved, the cross is the power of God. It is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. All who think you can gain salvation through philosophy, through debates and rational thinking, through your own worldly education. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. Friends, every religious system is the way of trying to figure out God. And how we can be right with God. And many religious systems have come out with ways, steps to knowing God, but also steps to pleasing God when you fail on the second step. And it's never enough. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was being preached to save those who believe. In other words, God was pleased to save those who simply understood that the cross is enough. Jews demand signs. The Jewish mind for the Messiah is a powerful guy who must come and destroy the Romans. For the Jewish mind is, I gotta perform in order to merit. The Jews demand power. If you are the Savior, then show yourself. But then we're saying the Messiah was the man who died on the tree. But the same law said, cursed is the man who died on the tree. No. It is offensive to the Jewish mind to say, the Savior came and died on the tree. No, that is weakness. 
Because our Messiah, He is the Christ, the Anointed One. He is strong. He is mighty. He must come and put all these Romans in their place. But they missed knowing that God's ways are not our ways. They demand, they demand signs. But the Greeks, what do they look for? Wisdom. Intellect. Philosophy. That's what they look for. But to those whom God has called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. To all those who have believed on him, Christ, Jesus, is both the power of God and is also the wisdom of God. If you want to experience the power of God, you come through Christ. If you want to experience the wisdom of God, you come through Christ. Christ is enough. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, Oh, I think I've ended. Let me just go down a little bit. Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you are influential. It's like he's talking about me. I don't know about you. Maybe me and myself and James and possibly Calvin right here. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of Jesus. It's because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become to us the wisdom of God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boast, boast in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. I'll finish reading. Another cross. And the power of the cross can only made, be made available to you when you have nothing to offer. The cross can only benefit you when there is nothing you have to offer. That's what Paul is saying. Jesus plus works does not work. Jesus plus a sacrifice does not work. I've seen some people say, you know what, I'm going through a very difficult time. Pastor, pray for me. And here is a seed so that God can hear my prayer. In other words, you're saying, God, I need you to hear me on the basis of the seed. God does not need your seed. He doesn't need your seed. In other words, you're saying, let me sacrifice more so that God maybe can hear me. That is pagan religion. Because pagan religion, they have no assurance if their deities can hear. That is why they're always sacrificing. Perhaps a deity can show up. But in Christ, we have everything because of what he did on the cross. You don't have to offer anything. You come as you are with simple faith and Jesus will supply where you are in need. You bring nothing. All you need to bring is a contrite heart. All you need to bring actually is weakness. All you need to bring is humility. Acknowledging that without God, you can do nothing. And when you come with that posture saying, God, here I am. I have nothing to offer. I trust in you. Then the cross is going to become meaningful for you. And that is what happened in our story of salvation. I remember 
People tried to preach to me many years ago before I got saved. And I was like, this thing is for weak people. It's for losers. Salvation is for people who have nothing to do. I have a life to live. I'm like, you are the guys who need it. I'm smart. I don't need it. I'm wise. My intellect is good enough for me. I'm on government sponsorship. I don't need nothing. So I thought. And then one day, God, by his sovereign choice, opened my heart and showed me the status of my heart. I remember it vividly. I can see myself in my room looking at me through the eyes of God. What I saw was not what I would like anybody to see. I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. In that shame, I began crying and wailing because I realized I'm not the good person I thought that I was. I was wretched. I was wicked. Every intent in me was all wrong. In that very moment, I wailed for my sins. But in that moment when I was close to what I truly was, at the same time, God said, I wanted you to see who you are because without seeing who you are through my eyes, you will never need me. And in my despair in that moment, I said, God, forgive me. I need you. In that very moment, I brought nothing. All I brought was my weakness, my weakness, my wretchedness. And guess what God did? He didn't say, you see, I told you. He said, I love you. He embraced me. In that moment of weakness, I experienced the power of God. And that power of God saved me in that moment. You see, friends, most of us in this place, possibly we are Christians. I want to assume that you are. That's why you come for Revival Nights. And if you're a sinner, you're here for Revival Night, I'm telling you, you are in the right place. Most of us think you need the gospel when you are beginning your journey of salvation. I need the gospel at the entrance point. For me, it was 1999. But today, uh -uh, I know what to do. I have the four spiritual disciplines. I pray. I read the word. What do I do? I evangelize. I serve. I fast. That's number five. And because I do that, hey, I'm somebody. <laughs> Don't clap. In other words, I'm in. Now that I'm in, I got to be accomplished. I pray. In other words, actually, in the morning, I prayed. Actually, I read the word. If the pastor asked me, how many of you have read the word? I will confidently raise my hands because, and then I look around. Who are the losers? Who, did not, who are the unspiritual people right in this place? What happens is, we think the gospel is for entrance. And now we begin to depend on our own efforts. You know what? We are not different from the Judaizers. The same gospel that brought you in is the same gospel you need every day. Every day. You know, when Pastor Brian asked us to pray right here, and give thanks to God. I just came here at the front. I just put my head down. And I realized. I'm still a weak person. I'm still selfish. I do not love enough. I was confronted by the fact that actually. I'm weak. I need the mercy of God each and every day. I need the grace of God every day. It doesn't matter how long I've been saved. Now it's 24 years. It doesn't mean 24 years now I have arrived at spiritual maturity. I need the same gospel as 20, 24 years ago. I need to depend on Jesus every day because I'm confronted with the fact that the flesh is still alive in me. 
You see what happens when we get saved and we have moved on for a some time, we begin to think we are something. And because we think we are something, what happens is we stop depending on God. We stop bringing weakness and contriteness and brokenness before God in prayer. We come like the other religious guy. Remember the two guys who prayed in the, in the, in the temple? There was a sinner and religious guy. I thank God I'm not like them. But this other guy came and said, God, look on me with mercy for I'm not even worthy of coming here. And Jesus said, the sinner was commended, the religious guy was not. You know, when we come safe for a long time, sometimes we think that our prayer means something to God. Our fasting means something to God. Our Bible study, those are good things, but they do not mean anything in terms of who you are today before God. We must depend on God each and every day as if we are just beginning. Because if you don't lean on God, who are you leaning on? Yourself. Your works. And when you lean on nothing, on anything else but the cross, then you become like the Judaizers. And when you live every day understanding that you need the grace, you need the mercy of God each and every day, when you live like that every day and you bring contriteness and humility before God each and every time, guess what? The power of God is released in your life. If you think you're something, I want to let you know that the cross won't benefit you tonight. You must take everything away from yourself and say, God, only you. You are enough. Nothing else. I will pray because I want to become more intimate with you. I will not pray because I want to tell people that I've prayed. I will read the word of God because in your will, I get to see who you are. I get to experience you. I get to know what you want me to do because I want closeness to you. I'm not reading the Bible so that I can just boast around the people that I know the Bible. I come and I quote scripture. I will fast because I want to detach from the things of the world so that I can clearly hear your voice because your voice is the most beautiful voice in the whole world. I will evangelize because I know that the gospel that saved a wretch like me, other people need it, not because it's a discipline to be proud of, but it's because I love you so much that I can't do nothing but obey you. All these things are good, but where you place them is important. Every time we bring all these beautiful things as accomplishments, we are not different from the persecutors of Paul. The cross becomes meaningless for us. And so friends, tonight, this evening, this revival week, some of you, I'm told we are still we are online. I didn't even know that. Our prayer is that today, this week that we shall come back to the wonder of the cross. That we shall come back to our first love. That we shall understand clearly that without the cross we are nothing. Like Paul said, let anyone who boasts boast. In the cross. A boast is anything you place your security, your worth, your identity in. That's what a boast is. What is your security? What is your identity? What are you bringing before God tonight? Let anyone who boasts, boast in the cross. In other words, place your security 100% in what God has done for you, not in what you have done. Don't come with your accomplishments before God today as you praise God. Here I am. I've done all these things. Therefore, do something. No, it's meaningless. Let your boast be in nothing but the cross of Christ. What? He has done for you. The Apostle John said, we love him because he first loved us. 
the reason we can even master an ounce, an atom of love is because we know that we are fully loved by God. It begins with him. Where are you, your boss? Where is your boss today? What is your relationship like with the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it based on what you do? Or actually, is it based on what God has done? Are you moved by what God did on the cross? Last weekend, which was yesterday, actually, we were reminded about the words of Jesus when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Your salvation your salvation was very costly. Your salvation was very costly. Not because God the Father forced the Son. No. The Son willed to die on that cross for you. Never forget how much God has loved you. And if somebody has loved you this much, how can you not love him back? If somebody has loved you like this while you're still a sinner, I mean, what is the most reasonable response? If somebody loves you at your worst and even dies for you, even when nobody else can die for you, what is the appropriate response? Paul, Paul says, therefore, in view of God's mercies, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. Present your body. In other words, the cross demands surrender. Complete surrender. Bring contriteness, brokenness, humility today. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, set apart. Some of you in this place, possibly as I'm speaking, you've been living sinful lives. Even though there is therefore no condemnation, but you need to come back to the love of God in this place in Jesus' name today. So what is the response to the message of the cross that I've been talking about? Surrender. Contriteness. Humility. Come back to the first love of God today. And that's what we're going to do in the next couple of minutes. We are going to just come back before God and return to our first love. Let's all rise upon our feet right now. Let's rise to our feet. Offer yourself right now. A contrite spirit and a broken heart, God will not despise. Oh, we love you, Jesus, this evening. And we bring hearts that are broken because of our wretchedness. We have nothing to offer but offer our hearts to you today. Oh, God, we present our bodies as living sacrifices today. We bring repentance. We bring ourselves back to you today. Holy and pleasing. Oh Lord, we love you this evening. We want you. We need you. We are lost without you. We are desperate for you. We are empty without you. In fact, we bring our brokenness and emptiness this evening and we pray. Receive us this evening. Child of God, this is your moment. Cry out to God for yourself. Bring yourself, offer yourself. 
Oh, we surrender our hearts. We surrender our minds. We surrender every part of who we are to you, God. Because we want you. We want the best from you. But where there is sin, where there is arrogance, pride, God, you can never work in that environment. But where there's brokenness, where there's wickedness, God, you pour your grace, you pour your mercy, you pour your power. Because your power is made manifest in our weaknesses. So God, we come, we don't postulate that we know everything. We come before you as it was in the beginning and we bring our lives. We offer ourselves to you, God. 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 Oh, we love you, God. Oh, we surrender our hearts to you this night. Oh, we love you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I'm going to ask you in this place, you know you are hungry for God you need a fresh impartation from God you are offering yourself afresh to God there is a place this space here at the front feel free to walk to this place as we sing as we pray let it be a moment of saying God here I am I'm going to stand out from where I have been I need you more than ever before. Come with your bag, come with your phone, and then just come at the front all over this place and let's pray over you right now. As you bring yourself, as you offer yourself, as we pray, I believe that God is setting you apart for something fresh. You just come at the front. Just come right now. Right now. Walk down. Come in this place and let's pray over you. Right now. Come, come, come. Walk down. And as you come at the front, don't wait for somebody to lay hands upon you. Just begin to cry out to God. You can kneel before. Let this be the altar for you to experience God. Just kneel across this place and let's pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Cry out to God. You know what you're going through. You know the status of your heart. Right here from all that space, this space at the front. Just go ahead and just allow. Invite God. Surrender to God. Let God begin to do a new work in you. In the name of Jesus, walk and let's believe God. Let God do something new, something fresh in your life. Because He's a God of new beginnings. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. Be ye separate. Let God begin to do something in your life. Cry out to God for your soul. Cry out to God for your sin. Cry out to God. Bring a broken spirit and the contrite heart the Lord will never despise in the name of Jesus oh God we love you we bring, we bring an offering of our lives before you today in the name of Jesus oh Lord prepare me Lord prepare me I sing it to be a sanctuary pure and holy Sing it again, Lord. Prepare me, everyone. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure 
and holy, pure and holy, tried and true, tried and true. We then sleep with thanksgiving, happy and living, sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me, Lord, prepare me to be a saint. Father, we have nothing to offer today. Nothing of worth we can bring before you. Nothing of value we can bring before you. Because our righteous works stink. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All None of us can meet your righteous standard. But what we were unable to accomplish for ourselves, God, you did through your son, Jesus Christ. And so today we come with nothing, but we just offer ourselves broken spirits and contrite hearts. We come in weakness and in humility. We come In powerlessness, we come in complete surrender today and we ask you today, receive us based on your grace and your mercy. Because that's who you are. You are gracious. You are merciful. God, I pray for those that have come at the front in this place right now who have chosen to walk away from their current status to where you want them to be in a place of complete and total surrender. God, I pray, would you anoint them right now with a fresh passion for you, with a love for you. May they love you because you love them first. Oh God, may you give them a new revelation of your heart and your love for them. In the name of Jesus, that every day may they always fall at your feet. That they will know that you are the ultimate, your true savior. You're the God who has loved them with an everlasting love. And you're drawing them back to yourself with your loving kindness. And that you receive them because of your love and your grace and your mercy. Today, I dedicate them before you. I pray in the name of Jesus that begin to do something new as they avail themselves to you in the name of Jesus. Because the broken spirit and a contrite heart you will not despise so father i pray that in their weakness oh god will you supply strength right now where they come 
in defeat. God, I pray that may they find victory only in you, Jesus Christ, because you are their wisdom, you are their salvation, you are their victory in the name of Jesus. Where they've been defeated, where sin has defeated them, my Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, as you love them, as they love you back, may they begin to overcome those sinful habits right now in the name of Jesus. May they not rely on their own strength. May they just lean on you every day. Lean on you. Trust in you with their whole hearts and not lean on your own understanding. And in all their ways, may they acknowledge that you are their true Savior, true God, true lover, true redeemer, true deliverer, true friend, true everything. May they lean on you and not lean on anyone else, my God. God, may their lives not be the same because they have chosen a life of surrender. May their lives not be the same because every day they are going to be surrendered to you. Because this is not a one-time surrender where you walk to the front of the church. I pray may this be their posture every day, a posture of humility or brokenness before you. Because in weakness, your strength and your power is manifested. May the power of the cross be poured out in their weaknesses, God. So heal them. Strengthen them. May they live holy lives. Because holiness is what we long for. Holiness is what you want from us. As a response to you, God, I pray that may we be holy because you are holy. Revive holiness in our hearts. A desire to be set apart for your purpose, God. May we be holy because you are holy, God. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, as a response to that amazing sacrifice, may we be set apart for your glory, God. May there be a revival of holiness, a love for holiness in this place, my God. May there be a head for sin and complacency, but a return to holiness in the name of Jesus. May you revive us again, that we might be people who love holiness, to be set apart for your glory. That may we not be people who are loving sin, but we loathe it because you are holy. You are holy, and therefore we are holy. So Holy Spirit, lead us, convict us. Renew us, guide us, set us free. And may we be set apart. Holiness is what you want from us. Holiness is what you expect from us. Not because we can do it in our strength, no. Because when we lean on you every day, you will produce holiness in us. So God, I pray not only for these people in front here, I pray for those online. In their homes, in their cars, wherever they are. God, I pray may your anointing flow through the airwaves, through the internet, and may they sense a call to holiness. Because you are holy. Set us apart for your glory. So God, we dedicate ourselves to you, God, today as vessels of holiness. So God, I dedicate every person standing in this place today, kneeling at the front today, everybody in this room today, we surrender ourselves today. We say, God, here we are, completely, absolutely surrender to you. And there is nothing you cannot do through a life that is completely surrendered to you. And that's who we are today. Holy Spirit, we invite you to do only what you can do. Because where there is Holy Spirit, where there is holiness, where there is Holy Spirit, all things are possible. So we love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name I do pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a big hand. Our friends, you can go back to your seats. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise right now. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. His love, His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness.
Even as we continue to worship the Lord and then we shall come back again to pray over a couple of things. Let's love him because he first loved us. Amen. So take my heart and for me take my mind just for me take my will my Lord call for me Jesus to yours to yours oh Lord to yours to yours to yours
Give him praise. Jesus, I owe all to you. It is all about you. It's not about me. It's not about my qualifications. It's not about my wisdom. It's not about my self-righteousness. It's filthy rugs. It is about you, Jesus. It is not about my prayer requests. It is about you. It is not about my needs. It's about you, Jesus, the one who died for me. Lord, it's about you. It's about your sacrifice. It's about the pain you went through. It's about every cross that you took for me that I would stand today and have the privilege of saying I'm a child of God. You know, every time we come to pray, it is very simple for us. I call it those moments of it's easy to pray pointing prayers. When we are praying for someone who is struggling, it is easy to go, I think it's a blame game that started all the way from the Garden of Eden. When you're saying that, oh, I'm praying for my neighbor. They have, they have treated me bad. Oh, I, my friends are unfair. My boss is unfair. And I can cheer you on that. And literally the illustration that most times I see is as we point the one finger in them, three points back to us. And we are back in the same spotlight that while you'll be standing and blaming a murderer and you're angry at your neighbor, by the end of the day, you're all the same. <laughs> while you're very bad, feeling bad about your neighbor and your friend who has committed adultery, you're lasting upon a woman while you look at them and a man while you look at them and you're all the same. And I was just reminded of David. What makes him special is that many times he took responsibility for his wrong. He always took responsibility for his wrong. He admitted his sin. He admitted that he was wrong. He was sinful. He was struggling. And that's where revival begins. That is where healing begins. When you understand that me, myself, I am too busy trying to change the world, but I'm not changing. I am not changing. I don't have time to change and repent. And as Pastor Eddie started and he pointed it to us and says, it's you. It's about you. I want us to take a moment, not only to reflect, but to begin to ponder on some of the confessions and the things we need to make before God. And just to settle it with you, they are wrong, everything is wrong, but what about me? Am I right? <laughs> oh no, I am not. None of us is. And this is not just the struggle we are going through. This is a struggle that even Paul, the apostle, also went through. And he's talking about his flesh and his wrestling with sin in his flesh. And I want to read for us a portion in Romans. He actually begins all the way from verse 14. And he's talking about his struggle with his sin. He's talking about the struggle with the sin. The things that I don't want to do are the things that I do. Sometimes the things, it's, it's just wrestling with sin. And let me tell you, this is the story of our lives. Let's read the portion together. I'm going to read from verse 21. He mentions and says, 
from verse 21. I have discovered the, this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. But if you can actually allow me, I just feel like I am haunted by the, script, the verses before. <laughs> and this is what they say. In verse 14 it says, So the trouble is not with the law, for it is with spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing what is wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Verse 18 says that, and I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. It's in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, so I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And then he ends up by saying, I have discovered this spiritual principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. And I know this is the story of our lives. But there is another power within me that is at war in my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin. It is within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. <laughs> Who will free me from this kind of life that is dominated by sin and death? That sometimes I come and I enter the church and when I go out of the church, it looks like nothing has changed. <laughs> when I go back in my room, I don't struggle to go back to what is wrong and you do it again. And even when you hear the message and it cuts through you, when you walk out and you go back to that family where you know you have to make things right, you feel you don't have enough strength to face the weight of your sinful nature. Paul, the apostle, the man who loved God so much was in this place. And today as Pastor Eddie was sharing about the message of the cross, the message of the cross should make us reflect and understand that the cross can only make meaning when you know that you're a sinner and you need a savior. And that's the moment I want us to take today. And I don't want to promise that some things are going to end today. Like as a church, we keep doing it because it's supposed to be culture. It's actually an attitude of renouncing sin and breaking up with your sin on a daily. And you break up with it and say, I am not going to do this. Where you renounce and you confess your sin to God and say, God, I'm angry. I struggle with anger. I don't like this nature in me, but I surrender it to you. And I know that you died on the cross that I'll be free. You defeated the sting of sin. And today I present this nature to you. And I ask you, oh God, deliver me. Free me from this bondage. And that is the deliverance we need today. So I want you to take a moment, child of God. And I want you to get real with God. Don't beat around the bush. You know your struggle. You know what you're going through. You know the areas in your life that you're going through. We are throwing away the blame game. And we are taking responsibility. And we are seeking God's help today to give us grace even in the moment of weakness. So come on wherever you are. Take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment and begin to commune with God. Begin to have a conversation with God and just call him and say, Lord, there's this weakness in me. There's this area in me that I struggle with. There's this thing that I don't like to do. But I find myself back in this same place. And yet I know that you've shared your message today and you've showed me the power in the cross that gives me grace to overcome sin, oh God. Oh, how much I need you. Give me grace. Search me, oh God. Search me today.
evaluate my anxious thoughts. And if you find anything wrong in me, remove it. Right now, oh God, I need your grace. I am tired of falling back to the puke. I'm tired of falling back to that which is dirty. I am tired of falling back to that which destroys me and disqualifies me and makes me feel guilty. I need your grace. I need you to help me today. Give me your grace, O oh God. Save me and I'll be saved. Deliver me today and I'll be delivered. For I am your servant. I am your vessel. My body is your body, O oh God. For you know my sin, even that which is hidden from men, even that which I cannot speak. You know it all, O oh God, and today I desire that you come and deal with me, O oh God. Wash me clean today. Wash me clean and I'll be cleansed. Come on, somebody, take a moment in the presence. Come on, somebody watching online, take a moment. Take a moment wherever you are. And just begin to surrender your sin to God. You cannot experience the greatness of God with sin. You need to surrender it today. You cannot experience the blessing of God with that sin. You need to surrender it today. You need to renounce it. You need to renounce it. You need to seek, just desire. Somebody, you're going to get your breakthrough today. Something that you've been going through for long is ending today. That as you cry out to God with all purity of heart, He is meeting you right where you are at your point of need. He is breaking the biggest man, the stronghold that has been holding back your blessing, that has been holding back His favor upon you, that has been stopping you from enjoying His presence. His sinful nature even makes you run away from his presence. Come on, confess it to him. Renounce it. Desire more of him. Let him help you today. Lord, we acknowledge today that the yoke of sin was broken on the cross. You defeated sin when you died on the cross and today, oh God, we desire to tap into that victory by the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God. Give us grace now for addictions to begin to break in the name of Jesus. For those areas, oh Lord, for outbursts of anger to break jealousy, oh Lord, Father, sexual perversion, any form of weaknesses that has been holding on to us. Right now, we surrender it to you and say, Father, help us. Help us today, O oh God. Creating us a clean heart. We need a new way, O oh God. We want to experience a new freedom, O oh God, without disentanglement and sin that has been holding on to us. In the name of Jesus. We surrender it to you. We have tried it on our own and we cannot make it. We have tried it on our own. We have consulted people and we can't make it. We cannot make it. We need you today to help us break the sting of our sinful nature, oh God. We need your grace, oh God. Oh Lord, those evil days where we do things that we don't want to do, where we do things that don't give you glory, where we do things that are filthy, that are dark, that are very bad and dishonoring to your name, oh God. May you wash us clean today. Oh God, wash us clean. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, oh God. 
have mercy upon us, O God. For the things that we have done, for the things that we are holding on, O God. For the habits that are overweighing us, O God. For where we are swimming in a pool of entanglement with sin, O Lord. We need your breakthrough and deliverance today. Come and make a way where there seems to be no way. For you said it in your word that you are faithful, God. For you are able to allow us not to be tempted beyond what we can bear. But even with such temptation, you provide an escape route. Right now you make a route for someone to escape the sting of sin, O God to escape the, the yoke of sin in the name of Jesus, oh God. Give us your grace. You give us your grace right now. You give us your grace. I need you, Lord. Son of God, have mercy upon me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I sit with people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the Lord. Take that posture of Isaiah. It's a posture of humility. Take the posture of David. Oh, create in me unclean heart, oh God. Cast me not away from your presence, oh God. Purify my heart. Come on, take that posture. It is the right posture. It is where deliverance is. Lord, right now, here we are. We have reached the end of ourselves. I don't know if there's somebody in this room where you've reached the end of yourself. Where you, you feel tired. You're tired. You're tired. You've tried. You've done everything. And you're tired. When you reach the end of yourself, then God's hand begins to work in you. Just surrender. And say, Lord, I am tired. I need you more, more of you now. I am tired of this nature. I am tired of giving excuses. I am tired of repeating the same cycle. I don't know how this originated. Or you might even know how it came about in your life. Begin right now to confront that sinful nature. And renounce it and break its yoke. Because he has given you power. The cross has given you power. To live a life free from sin. Come on, look to the cross and let the burdens fall off. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, that you're carrying burdens, and I'll give you rest. His yoke is light, his yoke is light. You don't have to carry that yoke anymore. The yoke of sin. You don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. He defeated sin on the cross. Come on, begin to let it go right now. Begin to renounce it. And just begin to allow it. Just renounce and say, I renounce you. You don't have any power anymore in my life. I am a child of God. I am not a slave of anger. I'm not a slave of sexual perversion. I'm not a slave of, 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 of adultery. A slave of fornication. I'm not a slave of, homos of homosexuality. I'm not a slave of, of, of jealousy. I am not a slave... I am not a slave of unforgiveness. I am not a slave. I am a child of God. I am free. I am not a slave. I am not a slave of jealousy. I don't have to hold on you jealousy anymore. I am a child of God. My God shall supply all my needs. He knows my anxious thoughts. He knows my heart. Search me, O oh God. Come on, somebody. Take that moment. Take a moment, take some moment now. Yes, Lord. 
as I pursue you, my God. <laughs> Daily, I make a covenant with you, O Lord, by your grace, that I will bring my flesh into subjection. That your glory shall be revealed in me. Lord, I offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That is my reasonable service. I offer all my weaknesses. Lord, I bring them to the altar and I say, Lord, have your way. Have your way in me, O oh God. Have your way in me, O oh God. Let's just take a moment of surrender. Even as we are in introspection and just raise your hands as a sign of surrender to him. And just surrender. There is power in that posture. Just surrender to him. Surrender. Surrender to God. Surrender. Surrender to God. Let's take a minute. Surrender. Surrender to him. Yes, Lord. I surrender everything to you. Less of me and more of you have your way. Give 
myself away, give myself away to you, Jesus. I give myself away so you can give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Just surrender to Him. Just offer everything. Before you, Jesus, we come. We surrender our lives. We surrender everything. At your altar we lay this. At your altar we lay this evening. Surrendering every title. We lay it at your feet. At your feet, Lord, we lay down our crowns. At your feet, Jesus. We lay everything, everything. Walk in us as vessels, Lord. Vessels you desire to walk through, Jesus. Vessels that you desire. So we offer our souls, we offer our lives to you, Jesus. Revive us, revive, <laughs> revive us, Lord. May there be a revival in our lives, the way we live our lives every day, Lord. That's the cry of our hearts while we are in your presence. Start a new work in us. And you walk, do a surgery in our hearts. Or do a surgery, surgery in our hearts. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. Oh, God. Friends, even as we are here this evening in our revival meeting, I was just reminded for a little while many, many years ago as a young man in this church coming to church every Sunday praying, reading the word of God but struggling with sin in my life I could do everything religiously which we can do but certain things could not go away in my background, I come from a highly polygamous background. So there was a spirit of lust in me. Now that one was coupled with alcohol. When you have those two brothers, life is just a mess. I could come here, I could pray, I could listen to the word, but somehow, when I could go back the same week, I go back into the same thing. Sunday morning, I'm here religiously. 10 o'clock service was my service. Do everything. Another week, another week, another week. And I was wondering, what is it? I, I pray, I read the word of God, what is it? I was introduced to one person who is a friend and he's the Holy Spirit. Bible says he gives us the power to live a godly life. He breaks the bondage 
but also gives us the power to live a godly life. And that surrender, when we sing, I surrender to you, it is I surrender to his leading, to his guidance, to his rebukes. At times, he's actually rebuking us. And he rebukes you. So tonight, in our revival week, I want us to, our surrender to be to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, even when he was leaving, he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but I'm going to send you another, a counselor, another just one, the one just like me. And that one is closer to us. He never condemns us. He walks beside us. He guides us. And my journey changed from that time on. My journey has never been the same again. I always say that I never know how I lost the desire to take alcohol. The lust for alcohol just disappeared. That was broken. Power of the Holy Spirit. I'm a married person. This week we celebrated our 20th anniversary. Faithful in my marriage to one woman for 20 years. From my background, that is unbelievable. <laughs> That's the power of the cross. The power of Jesus Christ. So I don't know where you are. I have one portion of scripture and we are going to pray together. The Bible tells us eleven begins and saying that for the gross the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. That's the grace we stand in. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this pleasant age, this wicked age in which we are in. While we await for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to do what? To redeem us from all wickedness and to purify us for himself, a people that are his very own, eager to do what is right. I want you to just take a moment wherever you are. And surrender to that leading of the Holy Spirit. Invite him. Invite him in your life even right now. Just begin to pray wherever you are. His grace is sufficient. The power of the Holy Spirit is available. He's available even in this place to break every bondage. We have had Pastor Jimmy leading us. We had had Pastor Eddie leading us in that area. That leading of the Holy Spirit to surrender your your life to him. Surrender to his leading, even right now. Invite him in your life. Holy Spirit, just invite him. Invite him to shed a light in your heart. To shed a light in you. To shed a light in you. Those areas where you are struggling, just bring them to him right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Surrender to him. Surrender to his leading. Cry out to him that Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you in this area. I'm struggling. I need you in this area. I'm struggling. Surrender to his leading. (laughs) 
He works in our brokenness, in those areas which even you don't want to utter. <laughs> yes. In those areas. Right there online. That area you are struggling with. You need him. You need him. He gives us the power. He gives us the power. He breaks bondages. He breaks bondages no matter how long they have been. No matter how long they have been. Whether they are generational or not, he's able to break them. And gives you the ability to say no to unrighteousness. You are able to walk in that freedom. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our individual lives. Have your way. Cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Purify. Purify. Consuming fire. You are consuming fire. May you consume that sin. That wickedness in us, Lord. Consume me tonight. Consume me tonight. Consume me tonight. That generational curse that is following, Lord, we pray. <laughs> Break it tonight. Break it tonight. Break it tonight. Break it tonight in your power. Break it tonight. We are helpless. We can't do it. So we ask tonight, may you break that hindrance, O oh Lord, that keeps us away from coming to you. Yes, Lord. Move across this place. Move across this place. Move across this place, Lord. Holy Spirit, move across this place. Yes. You are consuming fire. Consume. Consume that. Yes, Lord. Cleanse, cleanse our tongues from lies. Cleanse, cleanse tonight. Then right now, online, begin to cleanse, cleanse. Begin to cleanse. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you alone, you alone. We desire you, we desire you. We desire you, we desire you. Our desire is you, Lord. We are tired, we are tired. We are tired. Indeed, we are tired. We are tired. Yet we are helpless without you. We are helpless without you. We are helpless without you. So, Lord, we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you tonight. So we have you. Break bondages tonight. Break bondages tonight. Barriers, Lord. Hindrances whatsoever they are. Sicknesses and diseases whatsoever they are. You are the consuming fire. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. May you consume, oh God. Every wicked thought. Yes, Lord. Every pretension which is against you, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. It's only you, Lord. Only you. You give us the power to live a godly life. You give us the power to say no to wickedness. So, Lord, may you baptize us. With that boldness, Lord, the boldness you gave your disciples, that boldness you gave them to stand in a wicked generation, Lord. So, Lord, tonight, we ask for that. We ask for that. We ask for that, Lord. 
Lord, we ask for that. Lord, I know you are not a respect of persons. Lord, you have done it before. I ask tonight in the name of Jesus. Bondages of last time. Right now, I break you in the name of Jesus. Addiction to pornography. We break you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Masturbation, spirit of masturbation. I break you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, lust for power, lust for power, I break you right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Give us the power. Give us the power. Right now, we surrender to your leading. Feel us. Feel us, Lord. Feel us, Lord. Feel us, Lord. Feel us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. None like you, Lord. None like you. Holy Spirit, we know you are here. So we bask in your presence. We bask in your presence as you do what you alone can do. As you cleanse, you alone you can cleanse. As you give us that boldness, so that we receive. We receive from you. We receive this evening. We receive from you, Lord. By faith, we receive from you, Lord. By faith, we receive from you, Jesus. We receive from you. We receive from you, Lord. We receive our freedom from you. From you. Receive glory. Receive honor. Receive all the adoration. Let us continue in worship. Much of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you. of me and more of you less of me and more of you revive my soul and bring me back to my first love you are my first love Lord let 
Celebrate the Lord Jesus this evening. Give the Lord a big clap of praise this evening for returning us back to the place of our first love. Come on, you can do better than that. Wherever you are online joining, come on, celebrate the Lord. Celebrate His mercy. He's a God of second chances. Come on, He's slow to anger. He's abounding in love. He's full of mercy. He forgives our sins. He delights in they that are contrite at heart and lowly in spirit. That is who our God is. Reviver simply reminds us that our God is a faithful God to forgive and to renew and to restore. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, I'm just going to read a scripture for you. I just felt that I need to crown. We're going to crown the night with this scripture. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Hallelujah. Let's keep our eyes on who? Jesus. Please be seated. Well, we're coming to the close of this tonight and I want to thank you for just choosing to be a part of a moment where we are returning to the Lord and we are choosing to say, God, we need you afresh. We want to encounter you in a fresh new way. And so even as we get ready tonight, to give, I want to take an opportunity to just find out is there anyone who is here for their very, very first time to celebrate Jesus and have a revival meeting here at Watoto Church? Please raise your hand. We want to welcome you. Is there anyone here for their very first time? Put up your hand. It's your first time to Watoto, Watoto Church. Anyone, 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 anyone going once, going twice, going once, going twice. Anyone online, if you're there for your very first time joining us, feel free to raise your hand up there with an emoji. Otherwise, if there is no one going once, going twice, going two and a half, going thrice. All right. Guess what? 
Our vision is each one reaching one. Would you make it a point tomorrow to reach out to that one person you know needs to encounter the person of Jesus? If you know that, please make sure you do it. Reach out to the person, share the gospel with them, invite them to our meetings that are going to take place tomorrow at 6.30 as well as we continue to encounter the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit even tomorrow as well. So quick reminders for you. Tomorrow, 6.30, we're here. Wednesday, we'll be back in our small groups, having our revival meetings with communion taking place at that time. Thursday at, uh, at four of our compasses, Boyagere in Tinda, downtown and at Luboa. Those who are in Kampala, you can join us in any one of those celebration points for our Easter uh, praise rally that will be taking place as well at 6.30 on Thursday. Then Friday, we'll have our Good Friday services at all our campuses at 10 a.m. And then Saturday, take a chill pill. Sunday, come back for Resurrection Sunday. And let's celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Monday, take another chill pill and enjoy. Hallelujah. We want to do that as well. So please do be a part of that. But right now, it's time for us to give. I mean, I love this verse that says that I mean, consider him who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he together with him give us all things? You know, Jesus gave himself fully to us when he went on that cross. And so we want to take a minute of time right now to just celebrate our Lord by returning the tithe and giving of the offering. And as our culture and a custom of our total church, the blue bag is where you put in your uh, tithe and offering right over there. And the red bag is where you put in your build God's house that goes towards our facilities maintenance. And for other giving options for mobile money, please do scan the code that is up on the screen, I believe so. And then you'll get all those giving options as well. Otherwise, let's continue to celebrate Jesus in worship.
on, put your hands together for Jesus just one more time tonight. Celebrate Jesus. Let me invite all of us to stand to our feet. Wow, thank you. Wow, that's awesome. Let's rejoice for this is the day that the Lord has. It's amazing how they are taking our old songs and making them new songs. And it's a really good thing. I mean, don't forget, please invite someone tomorrow. Let's encounter the Holy Spirit a little bit more as we experience His power in a new dimension again. Amen? Let's stand to one another with those beautiful words. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Remain a blessing.